program works. Like I said, there's one unified CCNA. We're no longer going to have those individual tracks, but if you currently have a CCNA, you will get credit, you'll be migrated into the new unified CCNA. So when you migrate, you're going to not only get that unified CCNA, but you're also going to get a badge that represents your training specialty. So if you're a CCNA IOT, you'll get the CCNA unified plus a training badge that shows that you've demonstrated your ability to already pass the, the coursework related to IOT. At the professional level, you will need to pass a technology core and one concentration. There's no order that you have to do it to. There's also no recertification, sorry, there's no prerequisite required. So you no longer, as of February 24th, will need to have the CCNA before you get your CCMP. So drop in wherever it is that fits for your particular career path. So the technology core will be broad based, what everybody in that track needs to know for certification. And the concentrations are gonna be very specified. They're specific on job roles, products, things like that. We anticipate the concentrations will change. They'll evolve over time. Uh, as things become outdated, we're gonna retire those specializations. As other things become new and current and needed, then we're gonna create new concentrations so that we have this agile look to our portfolio. No longer are we gonna wait a period of years before you see any change and then it may be a huge change. You're gonna be able to see the changes along the way. The concentrations that are out as of February 24th, that's phase one. We had to limit what we could get ready on that particular day. Uh, and so there, there is a limit, but guarantee there will be more coming. So if you don't like what's there, you're not ready for that stuff, just keep checking back. We'll, we'll have some more for you. The DevNet track is the same way. They'll have a technology core, very software focused with some network engineering thrown in so that those two groups can communicate well together and function as a team. They will also have concentrations. The first five concentrations for the DevNet side are these five purple C's at the top. The cool thing about those five purple C's is that those are automation and programmability specific to that track. So they're double dippers. So if you pass one of those purple C's, say the automation and programmability for network or for enterprise solutions, then it would also count if you later wanted to get your professional level developer exam as well, or certification. At the IE level, if you notice there's no longer a written CCIE exam, to qualify to take the IE lab exam, you'll need to pass a technology core within 18 months of your first attempt, just like you do today with the IE written. Um, if you currently hold an NP, in most cases, when we migrate, you will migrate with the technology core specialization. Most cases, not all. So the timing, you know, on Monday we had the big announcement and everybody was surprised and hopefully kind of happy that we added this special track. But there were a lot of changes to the current program and hopefully we can embrace those as well because there's a lot of good stuff. The purpose of these changes, we wanted to make sure you guys could document your learning journey. You know, up until now, if you, you didn't get credit or you didn't get anything until you finished your certification. And now you're gonna get documentation along the way that you are progressing towards a certification. Or even if you have one, if you've taken additional courses, passed additional exams, you're gonna be able to document that knowledge as well. So as far as training, the DevNet site has done a really good job of providing some free resources and they have for years. So if you go to that developer.com, sorry, developer.cisco.com backslash certifications, that will provide you not only with the outlines of what the exam topics are going to be, but it also will identify currently available resources for you to start learning that content. There will be additional materials made available towards the end of the year. Uh, they're still working on those to make them very uh, 
specific for these prints as opposed to taking existing material and showing you how these smaller pieces fit in. So there'll be a more comprehensive uh, training area. As far as the current certifications or the, the engineer side of things, those uh, learning resources will start rolling out the end of June. Everything's a hard cut over on February 24th. So whatever you have today, whatever learning journey you're on today, try to finish that up by February 24th. Don't sit around and wait eight months. What happens if you sit around and wait eight months in the IT world? Right? You like wake up in a whole new world. So make sure that you continue educating yourself, preparing for things. If you're making progress towards a certification, keep on your path because you will get credit for all certifications that you hold as of February 23rd. Everything migrates over with the exception of the CSIN. The CSIN is you would take the ICND-1 exam today, so it's, a one, it's half of the CCNA. There's not a migration path for that. You will hold that certification until it expires and then it'll be called a retired path. But there is a plan in place to help you migrate into the new CCNA or finish up your ICND-2 before February 24th. So this is just an overview of the exams. Uh, if you look at the DevNet track, you would start at the associate level. Of course, it's not required that you start there, but if you're early in career, you have some experience with software, that's a really good place to start. Uh, it gives you an overview of how software integrates into networks, and it also gives you some hands-on experience. At the professional level, you'll need to pass that technology core in addition to one of these eight concentrations. The first five that are on this list are the track-specific automation and programmability exams, and then the bottom three, DevOps, the IoT, and the WebEx, are more software-specific. So if you're coming from the software developer side of things, you may want to be on there. If you're more from the network engineering side of things, you may want to pick your track-specific automation as far as uh, getting into this field. Again, the expert is to come in the future. It will, though, have the same structure. You will take a the technology core, and you will pass a lab to be considered a cabinet expert. So here's your QR code. If you want to take that, it'll take you right to that website, developer.cisco.com. Like I said, there are lots of resources online. All of the exam blueprints were live as of Monday, so you can see exactly what the exam topics are, exactly what tasks are listed under each category, and in addition, they do have those resources, so you can start learning about those exam topics today. So as long as you're here at Cisco Live, like what can you do? If you're interested in getting into the space, or maybe 